Hey, Sean, welcome to the Get In The Mode podcast. Thank you, David. Thanks for having me. We always talk about trust, but I think you had defined several levels. Maybe we'll kind of, you know, I know the different three different levels that you talked about. In your mind, if you were to kind of break it down, um, you know, what what does that look like? Sort of fundamental level of a relationship is is trust, right? So you know you have trust when there's a when there's a confidence relationship. Like I have confidence in you, you have confidence in me. There's you know you're you're competent and you care enough about me that there's there's a reason I should be maybe leveraging your tools or engaging with your org. Next level up is loyalty. So it starts with trust. When you have trust over a period of time, that turns into loyalty. Um, when you have loyalty over a longer period of time, hopefully that turns into advocacy. And um, and again, these are just words that I've chosen to represent different levels of this thing called a relationship, trust, loyalty, advocacy being the ultimate form of a relationship between um, an organization and the people that it leads, like its customers and its employees. We could talk about this internally as well as externally. If we're going to use it together, we, you know, we can take our individual context and set it aside and come up with a definition, a clear, clean, crisp definition with behaviors that we could observe that will indicate, hey, we burn trust because we can see these behaviors in the wild. We'll be wrong. It won't be perfect. It certainly won't be right, but it'll be useful. Mm -hmm. It'll be useful and it'll be powerful because we'll have better shared distinction around this word trust. And people will, you know, they'll put their, I mean, who doesn't want to be trustworthy, right? So when you have a group definition for the word trust and you're all working towards that, everybody wants to it just inherently wants to achieve that thing. So I define innovation as any tactic, idea, or, mm -hmm. or process change that when we deploy it, it causes a change in relationship, it causes a change, a shift in what I call momentum. Um, so you see a change in the relationship between the consumer. And again, this internally as, an, as a company, this could be an employee, it could be a customer, it could be an investor. But it causes a change in the relationship. And you'll you'll know you have it when you see that change. And if you're measuring for trust and loyalty and advocacy, you'll see, you'll see that shift. And I think it's a mistake to say that innovation, it's not an innovation if it's not the iPhone. If it's not disruptive, it's not an innovation. Like not everybody on your team is capable of creating those types of innovations. So that's like immediately you're setting yourselves up for being disappointed and having, you know, failing to innovate. I think the small ones matter. I think the small ones add up. And I think if everybody's thinking about innovation, if everybody's thinking about how can I improve the relationship that I have strategically with this customer, with my colleagues, with the business, you're going to get more, you're going to get micro innovations and you're going to get more energy around looking for those innovations. I'm, uh, you know, I'm maybe talk a little bit about how, can leaders develop culture? Like where, like, let's say we want to define the organization culture, like what are some good exercises or where does one begin? Let's, let's start there. Well, let's, let's start with where one begins. Every group of two or more people has a culture. So we have to acknowledge that. So there's a culture, yeah. it exists. You, you know, even if you're starting from scratch, you have a culture. It exists in the way that you share language. It exists in the way, in the stories that you tell and the mantras that you have, and that's how you start. So if you want to grow a company or an organization um, purposefully, with one of the things you have to work on is culture. And you're doing this whether you realize it or not, because every culture has the exact culture that it needs to produce the results it's getting today. If you want different results, then you look at the culture and you change it. But I think it's a misnomer to think that you can control your culture. You can't. Mm. You can't. Then the bigger you get, the harder it becomes to have any influence over it. You, the only thing you can do as a leader is influence the culture. And you have that um, because all eyes are on you, the, the higher up in the org you are, the eyes are on you. You model the behaviors, you model the language, you model the mantras, you model the things that, that become um, copied, ho hopefully, um, that are positive, and you amplify them. So it's your job to influence the culture and to recognize that you can't control it. So would, do you, I mean, are they like organization values that, you know, how some companies have them sort of like plastered around the walls of the company? Like, do you recommend creating 
sort of like a document like that that can be socialized within the organization what, what's how do you sort of like quantify it like how do you make it tangible yeah so the great question and i think you absolutely should define your corporate values i i believe in the the rule of fives um my partners are, and i um have come up with five key values that we think are important i think um, I believe that if you feel they're important, you do a bunch of things with these values. The first thing you do is you onboard people to them. So when you when you hire new people, they have some some training um, that you put them through. So they see what yeah. you mean when you say this word. You you take the time to define each value very clearly. So maybe one page definition with examples of of what you mean when you say that value, so that there's a clear expectation set. You model those values yourself as the leader. Um, you build it into your performance management system. So if you've got a, a way in which you're assessing the, the values and the performance of your people, you incorporate it into that. And we've, we've done that very successfully um, in the past. And then you build it into your recognition systems. So if you have a praise praise system or a, um, some sort of recognition system, it's, it's based, you know, values can get tagged in there. Um, the more pervasive it is, and also in your cadences. So you have you know, every business has a set of cadence. You have stand-ups daily, weekly, monthly. You have all staff meetings, all of those things. Find ways to incorporate your values into those um, into those cadences and then also into your artifacts. So if you have corporate artifacts that you put out, like your website yeah. or um, other other documents or things that you that you do that have an impact on the culture, leverage your values in those conversations as well and in those artifacts. And the more of that that you do, the more solidified those things become, they become tools. Like the values are only useful if if they can be used to make decisions in the wild when you're not in the room as the leader. That's when right. they're useful. Mm -hmm. So in order to make them useful, you have to demonstrate that you care about them. You have to model that behavior and you have to put systems in place that sort of replicate the storytelling and give people the opportunities to actually use the values. Hello everyone. Thank you for listening to that clip from the Get In The Mode podcast. To watch the full episode of the podcast, click the link in the show description. Also, consider subscribing to the Get In The Mode YouTube channel to directly see new episodes on your YouTube feed.